guys, this is an unboxing of a bilge pump. And you may say, why would you ever buy a bilge pump if you don't own a boat? Or maybe I've never told you that I don't own a boat. I don't own a boat, so why would I buy a bilge pump? Well, this is going to be a part unboxing, um, part a detail about... Um, emergency preparation and uh, being ready for all sorts of things. Um, I'll get to um, that part second. I'm going to unbox this here on, on the video. This is a Shoreline Marine. This is a Canadian Tire Special. It's a um, 600 gallon per hour uh, pump and it is completely submersible and Let's see, submersible tinned wire, easy removal for cleaning, dual mount, 600 gallons per hour. Um, now the, the key information here is this, which you can't really see. It's the, uh, the voltage. This is a 12 volt pump. And that may give you a hint as to, to why I got it. It is a 3 amp, it says there, you probably can't see it. 3 amp at 13.6 volts DC. So, um... Uh, that's how uh, much amperage it draws when the battery is fully charged. And uh, I don't know why it would pull less than that when the battery is not fully charged. But anyways, um, I, I think the actual 600 gallons per hour is how much it can um, transfer or pump at a full 13.6 volt uh, battery for you know maximum, maximum voltage there. <clears throat> so... On the back here we have we have some screws. We got the mount here. I'll get up there. We got some wiring. Um, this is the bottom of the unit. It just sits in the water. <clears throat> there is um this is meant for a boat basically. You put this in the bottom of a boat, and there's a little diagram there showing you uh, uh, what to do. There's supposed to be a little floater on off switch that you can plug into it, which is an, another thing that you can buy. It's again then it's got a 12 volt battery here. So the uh, the little floater switch is an automatic on off. And uh, as if the water uh, bumps up the floater, obviously, then the bilge pump uh, starts up and uh, uh, bails out your boat or uh, gets the water out of the hull or whatever. Um, so, yeah, this is, uh, it's got a three-quarter inch uh, outlet on it, 19 millimeter for a hose. Um, so that is some good water flow. This one does say it's good for salt and fresh water. You, Again, you can't really see it there, and it's hidden under there, but it's, it says it's good for uh, salt and fresh water, so that is handy. And uh, for an off-grid um, situation, 3 amps is not too bad. Uh, it's not the best, but uh, this would not be a 100% duty cycle uh, thing. So I'm going to uh, open it now on, on camera, try not to cut myself. These plastic cases are... It's a little hard to cut. And I don't think I want to be doing an unboxing where I cut my finger or something. So. Let's see. All right. Here is the guy. Pull that out, and uh, you, so you can see how small it is. It fits in my hand. It's a pretty tiny unit pretty light. It is made in China. Um, it is fully submersible, uh, so that is good. Just looking in there, I don't see a, must be an impeller down there somewhere. I don't, I don't see the impeller under here. Let's see, I think this comes off. I don't know if it does or not. Yep, there it goes. Okay, there's the impeller. Put my knife away so I don't cut myself. Look, there's a little impeller in there. That's uh, that feels nice and stiff. You want to feel that motor bumping around. That means there's good strong magnets in there. So that is great. Um, this was about twenty-one dollars from Canadian Tire. And again, it's just your standard bilge pump for a boat, for a recreational boat. Um, it's nothing super high quality, um, and it draws three amps. So that is the unboxing of the uh, Shoreline Marine three amp uh, bilge pump, twelve volt bilge pump. 600 gallons per hour. <clears throat> now for the second part of it, I want to uh, talk about why I got this. Now I have several um, preparations. I have livestock and 
um, you know, for fresh eggs, and I've got my off-grid solar uh, bowler, and so I'm set for um, many types of emergencies. Um, you know, if the power goes out for a week, um, I have a backup plan and some ideas for uh, how I could get through that. Now, I can't power all my freezers, um, so we would have to come up with some other thing to do, um, but I do have um, somewhat of a, a plan and uh, electricity there for charging cell phones and that sort of thing if I need to. And I've shown you that in my bowler, in my off-grid bowler with my uh, solar panels and, and uh, batteries and stuff. Now, one thing I didn't have was in an off-grid situation, uh, the ability to pump water. Now, in my bowler, I have a tiny pump, which is about kind of maybe half that size, if, if not a little bit smaller than this pump. And it's just a tiny pump. It's a, it's a fraction of the, uh, the three-quarter inch there. Um, and it just pumps water out of a little uh, fresh water tank into the sink in the bowler. And that works fine. And it's about, uh, I think it draws one amp or something like that. Um, pretty pretty low uh, uh, draw, anyways. Uh, but that wouldn't be good for a household. If the power went out in our household and we need to flush toilets, uh, we could use buckets. But uh, I thought, well, I've got uh, power. Um, all that we need to do is get uh, a bilge pump, you see, and plug in my hose to one end, to the uh, outlet end, stick this potentially down my well. It might fit. I have a, I think it's an 8 inch diameter, or I mean a 6, six inch diameter uh, well pipe, something like that. I don't know. So it might, this might actually fit down my well and it's fully submersible. So you, and you stick it down there all the way into the water, have your hose run it up, um, and then it runs. Now, I did have a choice of uh, a 1.5 amp pump with a three quarter inch pipe, but I thought that may not uh, push the water up high enough. That may not be enough power to push it up high enough because it's a, I don't think it's a deep, deep well, but is it's a, you know, it's a regular household well. So it's going to be, um, <clears throat> you know, it's not just like you're sitting beside the, the river and it's 10 feet, it's got to push the water up. It's got to push the water up you know, maybe 20 feet or something. So I'm hoping this will do it. And what I can do in an emergency is I can pipe in parallel to uh, my other uh, household water because I don't have, my solar power uh, isn't enough to power our well pump because it's like 2,000 watts or 3,000 watts or something. It drives a lot of power. Um, so in an emergency, I could actually plug this guy into my solar power and being 3 amps, this would provide enough flow uh, for us to maybe fill up the, the toilets and have some basic intermittent uh, running water in the kitchen. And uh, I think that would supply some very basic needs. You wouldn't want to run a bath, uh, you know, with this um, because it would draw the battery down if it takes uh, three amps every hour. Um, you know, that's going to take a lot of electricity. It's going to take a lot of solar power. But running this for, you know, 10 or 20 minutes to get some toilets filled up uh, during a power down uh, emergency situation that would do the job and like I say my system will run this no problem my solar panels on a sunny day will bring in seven or eight amps uh, per hour um, so this drawing three is is again that that should be a fully sustainable load on my solar equipment my off-grid equipment so this is kind of the last piece uh, of the puzzle to my um, you know emergency preparation stuff, my homesteading stuff, my off-grid stuff. This is kind of the last thing that I needed. I had the electricity, um, I didn't have the water. We do have the heat because we have a wood stove. Um, so we've kind of got all the components uh, to survive for some time um, if we had to, uh, off the grid with the, without electricity. And I think this is, this is kind of a luxury. I mean, you wouldn't really need um, uh, water, but, you know, be you wouldn't really need the uh, the ability to pump water. But um, you know, if you're if you're going without electricity for uh, you know a, a week or two or whatever, uh, then certainly something like this could come in handy and um, provide some relief and some uh, luxury to that situation. And uh, you know, it's never a bad idea to have another a water pump around. You never know when it can come in handy for other projects too. So uh, that is my plan. It's just one more uh, way to be self-sufficient. 
it was kind of the last piece of the puzzle in my house like I say I have uh, I can burn wood for heat uh, without electricity I have a little bit of uh, off-grid electricity for charging cell phones and, and running some uh, small electronics um, if I need to even it'll even run the vacuum cleaner I have a thousand watt inverter um, and I can you know I can run uh, the fridge for example although not necessarily 100% duty cycle but I can run a lot of the large electronics but like I say the one piece I was missing was uh, the water component to the house I, I didn't have a pump that I could actually run in a uh, in a power you know a grid down situation so this little guy should do the job again this uh, draws about 3 amps I figured I'd go for 3 amp versus the 1.5 just to uh, get a bit more um, power for it to push water up and into the house uh, but I think that will work and um, this wouldn't pressurize um, uh, my pressure tank really but I'm thinking it would uh, put enough pressure in the system that it would be pushing water out to uh, our sinks in the kitchen and, and you know for for that sort of use again you wouldn't want to be using this for shower long showers and that sort of thing because you're gonna burn this motor out um, this is just a cheap you know uh, the cheapest um, bilge pump that you can get at Canadian Tire uh, but for an off-grid solar purpose um, this thing is kind of purpose-built I mean it's purpose-built for um, DC operations so it should work fine and it's uh, you know you would think it's built well enough to be able to deal with all the junk and sludge in uh, that a bilge pump would have to deal with in the bottom of a, a boat so I'm hoping it'll be strong enough and durable enough to uh, give us some relief if we needed to pump some extra water so that's yeah that's my uh, little off-grid homestead update unboxing um, emergency preparation sort of video Hope you enjoyed it and uh, let me know if you think that idea is cool or if you have another idea for uh, pumping water in your house in a grid down uh, situation.